Welcome to Kingdom Word and Wealth. Be blessed as you enjoy the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit through God's servant, Shola Babalola, the pastor of Kingdom Pathway Church, where we are committed to raising men and women of stature who will have a vision for life, develop a mission to accomplish the vision, and be driven with the passion to follow through. Stay tuned as he shares with you the truth of God's Word. Praise God. I welcome you to another edition of Kingdom One on Wealth. I believe the Holy Spirit is here to give us an answer of peace. I'm glad you could tune me again today. Shall we have a word of prayer together? I pray, Lord, for my listener, let your word come to us, Lord, in the language we understand. I thank you. I give you all the glory, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. This morning, we're going to continue the series on the flight of an arrow. The flight of an arrow. And we have been studying around Psalms 124 where the Bible says in verse 4 that we are like arrows in the hand of the mighty. So are the children of one's youth. And the Bible says, Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. That tells me that an arrow is a major voice that the mighty have against the enemy. The only thing that will justify the strength of the mighty is the effectiveness of the arrow. What will justify the strength of the mighty, how effective the mighty is, is the effectiveness of his arrow. So when the arrow fails, that tells me that there is no way that the mighty can, can convince people that is actually mighty. So we must have that one at the back of our mind. If we are going to prove that our God is real, we will be the one to be that proof. Paul said that you are that epistle that is written. We are the ones that we show to people that there is a God that ruins the face of men. You know, the devil always likes to use the life of men to showcase his wickedness. But I want to tell you that God wants to use our lives as believers to show how mighty it is and to showcase his own goodness. And I believe that you will be part of those people in the name of Jesus. So now we are looking at this arrow. What are the things that make the arrow to be effective what will make the flight of the arrow to be effective and we are looking at it that the first thing that will make the arrow to be effective is the mighty that is aiming it the mighty that is aiming it who is that person that is aiming you in life that person has a good way to show whether you will be mighty or not and or you are not going to make it in life and i want us to look at it and, and don't forget last time i started telling us about the mighty that are three persons that can take the role of the mighty in your life one the father god two is your natural father and the third one is your spiritual father and i want us to look at how god happens to be our mighty the bond that is aiming us now look at verse 8 psalms 24 verse 8 the bible says who is this king of glory he said the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle that is god the bible says that it is my he is mighty in battle that is the person that is aiming us in our direction in the direction that we should go no at the time he said that we teach you the way you will go that is in is aiming us in the right direction look at john chapter 20 verse 21 the bible says so jesus said to them again peace be unto you as the father has sent me i also send you that is the father god is sending us in fact at the time jesus was saying that i sent you into the world and is making us understand how we must live in this life that you're not part of them i'm sending you there to go and represent me fully so we must have that one at the back of our mind. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 1 to 12, we have the account of Jesus sending his disciples out. And as a matter of that, when they came back, they fully represented him. And Jesus said, I could see the devil falling, as, I mean, falling like, 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 like thunder. I hope you are following what I'm saying. So God is the one that sent us out. And this morning, my focus is actually to dwell so much on how the natural father does that. How the natural father does that. And I know many people, they are not, they could not enjoy this particular one. And that's why we have so many people that are missing things in life. But this one will give us a picture of how the Father God him us and how the spiritual Father too him us. 
Look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. We have the account of David because I heard the Lord speak to me that if you want to understand the harrow properly, you must study around David because David is that harrow. Is a major representation of the harrow in the hand of the mighty. And we must look at what freed David so that once we have those things that frame him too, we can be effective as arrows. Chapter 16 of 4 Samuel, we have the account of the distressing spirit troubling Saul. And at the time Saul said this in verse 17, he said, Saul said to his the servant, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Verse 18, then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is king for one in play. Two, the person is mighty man in villa, is a, might, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Now this will give us the prerequisite for being an arrow. It gives us that prerequisite of being an arrow. And it's so important for us to understand how it works. Now, the scripture says that it's skillful. And to be skillful means that person has been trained. You have never seen somebody that is skillful, that knows how to play ball very well. That will not be trained. The Bible says that he's a mighty man of valor. He's a young guy, but he's mighty. A man of war. And what described him to be all this are the experiences that he had gained over time. In his ministry, in what he does, they have taught him to be this mighty. I hope you are following me. The next one is that he said he's prudent in speech. So he doesn't speak perpendicularly. He has been trained to speak in the direction of where he's going. And those are the things that we must have at the back of our mind as the harrows. The next one is that he's a handsome man. The scripture calls him a handsome man. So in all that his physical look had an attraction. And the last one is that he said the Lord is with him. Now but follow this. Therefore so sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And I wonder why they said, Who is with the sheep? Because they know that is his place of training. That is his place of assignment. And I want to tell you this morning that if you are going to be the harrow that will fly and hit target, you must be about your assignment. Jesus said, I must be about my father's assignment. It's a choice that you will need to make in life. Many things can distract you, but you will make a choice that I will not be distracted in this major thing I'm called to do. That is what the scripture is saying. That is about his father's assignment and the Lord is with him. He had the presence of God. It's not just strength alone. It's carrying the presence of God Almighty. God wants us to do that. Now look at verse 20. This is where I'm going. See, and Jesus took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by his son David to Saul. Now I want you to take notice of these three words. Bread, wine, young goat or we can use that lamb okay now those are the things that jesse used in sending david to Saul. and now the question now is that why did he put those three things in his hand now don't forget jesse is that mighty man that wants to him and send forth arrow david to the camp of Saul. now jesse understood i cannot get to throne again I can't go to that place. I can't go that far again because of my age. And probably because that is not in my destiny to actually go directly. But there is someone that if I can walk on very properly and I can send them forth, it's going to represent my mind and it will definitely get me to the throne as well. So Jesse understood that and he put these three things into his life. These three things that he used in sending him forth were the things that they used in coronating someone. I hope you are following my point. If you look at the story of David properly, earlier in this scripture, the scripture says that Samuel came and he said, I want to ordain somebody into a role in life as a king instead of Saul. And eventually it was David that was chosen. Now that is like a spiritual father over David now. Now, his father, natural father, understood that. Now, I said, I will help you. So, what did he do? He chose this thing that is a sign of coronation to have spiritually put him in position before that time will come. These are the things they use in coronation in ordaining people into kingship there. So, Jesse understood that and he did it for him. 
Now, this is where I'm going. If David had all these characteristics, skillful in plain, mighty man in valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, handsome person, the Lord is with him. If he had all of those things, but there is no mighty that will him him, shoot him, release him into that place, he will never accomplish what he was supposed to accomplish. He will have these characteristics and yet he will not enjoy the best that God wanted him to enjoy. And I'm brother, I want to tell you something that your life carries strength. The characteristics that you have in life, wonderful things that God has put inside of you. As good as those things are, you need someone in life to heal you, to release you to the place you must get to. I hope you are following what I'm saying now. It is very important to have that mighty, somebody that will see you in your destiny and that will release you into your destiny. Somebody that will see beyond what others see that will lead you to your destiny. My time is up this morning, but I want you to think about it. You're going to come back again and talk in this direction because it's so important to understand that if you will be effective as an arrow, if you will get to the place where you will get, you need somebody to release you into your destiny. You need someone that will prepare you well and get into your destiny. Shall we pray together? Father, I pray this word let it be a blessing to my listener. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I encourage you to join me in the next episode and it shall be well with you. Today, go and win with Jesus. We believe you have been blessed by that explosive truth of God's word. Your minister has been Shola Babalola, pastor of Kingdom Pathway Church. For prayer or further inquiry, visit our website at www.kingdompathwaychurch.org. You can also contact us by phone at 847-868-2357 or email us at info at kingdompathwaychurch.org. Until the next edition of Kingdom Word and Wealth, go! and win with Jesus.